We're diving into the terrifying details of what really happened. Now turn your lights off, set back and enjoy. In 1976, a young woman named Annalise Michelle underwent a terrifying exorcism that became a tragedy. Now let's compare what we saw in the movie with what really happened. When did Annalise begin to experience strange symptoms? In 1968, when she was 17 and still in high school, Annalise began to suffer from convulsions. Court findings have her experiencing her first epileptic attack in 1969. It was then that a neurologist at the psychiatric clinic Würzburg diagnosed her with grand mal epilepsy. Soon, Annalise started experiencing devilish hallucinations while praying. She also began to hear voices, which told her that she was damned. The court determined that by 1973 Annalise was suffering from depression and considering suicide. In 1975, convinced that she was possessed, her parents gave up on the doctors from the psychiatric clinic. They chose to rely solely on the exorcisms for healing. Annalise's symptoms have since been compared with those of schizophrenia, and they may have responded to treatment. Who first diagnosed Annalise as being possessed? The first unofficial diagnosis was made by an older woman who accompanied Annalise on a pilgrimage. She noticed that Annalise avoided walking past a particular image of Jesus, and that she refused to drink water from a holy spring. The woman also claimed that Annalise smelled hellishly bad. An exorcist from a nearby town examined Annalise and concluded that she was demonically possessed. After two failed requests, the right of exorcism was finally granted by the bishop. Was Tom Wilkinson's character of Father Moore based on a real person? Tom Wilkinson's character was more a combination of two real-life people, Father Arnold Renz and Pastor Ernst Alt. Both men were assigned by the Bishop of Würzburg, Joseph Stangl, to carry out the great exorcism on Annalise Michel. Together they carried out 67 rites of exorcism over a period of 10 months, with one or two exorcism sessions held each week. Some sessions lasted up to four hours. Did Annalise Michel really see the faces of demons on the people around her like Emily Rose did in the film? According to the Washington Post, as she grew more convinced that she was possessed, Annalise began to see the faces of demons on the people and things around her. What demons possessed Annalise? Annalise was convinced that she had been possessed by several demons, including Lucifer. Judas Iscariot. Nero. Cain. Hitler. And Fleischmann, a disgraced Frankish priest from the 16th century. She also mentioned a few other damned souls who had manifested themselves through her. Did Annalisa's mother Anna support the making of the film? No. Annalisa's mother did not support the making of the exorcism of Emily Rose. Mrs. Michelle who was at the time in her 80s, said, I don't want to see the film and I don't know anything about it. Annalisa's father, Joseph, died six years prior to the film's release. How many people were found guilty in Annalise Michelle's death? Annalise's parents and the exorcists were found guilty of negligence. In the 2005 film, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, only one of the characters, Father Richard Moore, Tom Wilkinson, was found guilty of negligent homicide surrounding the death of Emily Rose. In the real-life case of Annalise Michelle, they were Father Arnold Renz, Pastor Ernst Alt, and Annalise Michelle's parents. Joseph and Anna. 
All four were found guilty of negligent homicide and sentenced to six months in prison, suspended with three years probation. What other disturbing things did Annalise do? Annalise carried out a number of highly disturbing actions. She licked her own urine off the floor. She ate flies, spiders and coal. She bit off the head of a dead bird. In one instance, she crawled under a table and barked like a dog for two days. She could often be heard screaming through the walls for hours. Tearing off her clothes and urinating on the floor became a regular occurrence. Did the exorcisms cause her bodily harm? Yes. Annalise endured 67 rites of exorcism over a period of 10 months. The ligaments in her knees ruptured due to the 600 genuflections that she performed obsessively during each exorcism session. A genuflection is an act of reverence consisting of falling onto one or both knees. On June 30, 1976, during her last rite of exorcism before her death, too weak and emaciated to perform the genuflections on her own, Annalise's parents stood and helped carry her through the motions. Was there a doctor present during the exorcisms as in the film? No. Around Easter time of the year that she died, Annalise began to refuse food and drink. Her convulsions returned with a greater ferocity. No doctors were called. During the trial, specialists claimed that if the four accused would have begun to force feed Annalise a week before her death, then she would still be alive. One of Annalise's sisters explained to the court during the 1978 trial that Annalise did not want to go to a mental hospital where she would be drugged and forced to eat. In her book, The Exorcism of Annalise Michel, Felicitas Goodman embraces the possibility that Annalise was not epileptic, and that the medication the doctors had given her to control her seizures only made her hallucinations worse. Why did Annalise Michel refuse to eat? She forced herself to fast because she believed that it would rid her of Satan's influence. At the time of her death, she weighed only 68 pounds. What were Annalise Michel's last words? Weak and on the verge of death. She spoke her last known words on the day before she died. She told her exorcists, beg for absolution. To her mother Anna, she said, Mother, I'm afraid. Is it true that the body of Annalise Michel was exhumed after her death? Yes. On February 25, 1978, almost two years after her death, the deceased body of Annalise Michel was dug up and moved to a new oak coffin lined with tin. Her parents' desire to move her from the cheap coffin in which she was buried was allegedly used as an excuse to exhume her body. Instead, they were acting on a message received from a Carmelite nun from the district of Olgoy in southern Bavaria. The nun had told the parents that she had a vision that their daughter's body was still intact. Official reports state that the body showed consistent deterioration. Photos of the exhumed body were never released, and Annalise's parents were prohibited from witnessing the exhumation. From a distance, they could however see her grave from the bedroom of their home, where her mother still lives today. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If that's what happened, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for more true stories.